Let's take a look at Greek myths. Here, of course, is the well-known story of Narcissus and this beautiful woman who has been throwing herself at Narcissus has been rebuffed because he's intent at looking at himself in the lake. And she says, is there somebody else, Narcissus? Of course there's somebody else, him. His personal myth is, I am the most beautiful man in the world, and I am worthy of adoration by everybody, including myself. So she misses out, and the gods decided to teach him a lesson. Okay, you want to look at yourself? We're going to turn you into a flower, and you will be able to look at yourself 24 hours a day. And that was their myth about how the Narcissus flower came into being. Well, people do that every day of their lives. They make up stories, and when the stories have a dream element to them, in a philosophical element to them, we call them myths. In fact, from a psychological point of view, we can say that a myth is a statement or a story that addresses deep existential concerns, that has an element from the imagination, and that has consequences for human behavior. So a myth can be one sentence long, or it can be Volumes long, like the Iliad, like the Odyssey, like Beowulf, etc., etc., etc. Sigmund Freud used myths in talking about the Oedipal complex, the Electra <laughs> complex, but he never quite knew what women wanted. Well, in this cartoon, he says, What does women want? His wife knows very well what women want. Women want some help around the house. <laughs> Freud never caught on. He never asked her. But I'm going to give you a more simple-minded talk, looking at uh, dreaming in general, and especially Jung's idea of the big dream, and see whether, what we can make of that, whether we can characterize that. So I hope you all know what a, a, you know, a big dream is, a powerful dream, a dream that stays with you. You probably all know Freud had one dream. It involved his, uh, a bunch of bird-beaked men carrying his mother's body. It wasn't clear whether she was dead or alive. Stayed with him his whole life. Jung, as you know, had his one dream about descending to different levels and finding a huge phallic pillar in the basement. Uh, today, from Murray Stein presented to very clear big dreams today, the Hagia Sophia and the, the Lord coming down, and the uh, figure eight serpent with orchids on its back. So well, what wonderful big dreams. Those are dreams that we remember. And in fact, uh, both Murray and Margaret remembered their patient's dreams for years. I've, I've had a few dreams too that have stuck with me. Uh, so we, so what, what differentiates the big dream from an ordinary dream? And I have to put this in a, well, I, I can get ahead a little bit and say, for me at least, discussing my own and my colleagues' dreams, it seemed to me that, that the power of the imagery was very important. But I want to get to some actual research, which is my research on uh, well, the nature and functions of dreaming, which for me is the, especially the central image. First is, okay, what does Jung have to say about the self? Basically, as you know more than I, uh, ba Jung's basic idea is that the conscious and the unconscious complement each other. And as we will see, and as Ernest pointed out, there's a continuum from focused awake, daydreaming, sleep, and dreaming. Uh, so, the conscious and the unconscious, the daydreaming, the focused, awake, the sleep and dreaming complement each other. And we'll try to look at that in some detail neurologically. And to Jung, our self is not our ego. It's not who we thought we were. Our self is rather who we really are, the known and the unknown. The integrated 
And he doesn't say what is not integrated, but the integrated and what has yet to be integrated. I like that. Um, he continues, our perception of ourselves is our ego, but our true self is a great deal more. The ego is the center of consciousness, whereas the self is the center of our total personality. It includes consciousness, unconsciousness, and the ego. The self is realized as the product of individuation, process by which we integrate our personality, the conscious, the unconscious, and the ego. One of the things that uh, I'm going to be talking about is a little bit of the brain basis for much of what we've already heard. The, uh, and I, I don't want to be too reductionist here, but there are some amazing um, studies that have come out just in the last 10 years, well, in the last 15 years, um, with the neurology of dreaming, particularly in the REM state, uh, uh, and you know the REM state function of the brain, but also in just the basic waking state neurology of those centers that have found to have been active in the brain state. And as you read some of these studies, um, it's amazing how they shed light not only on what uh, some of the things that Jung said, which is what I want to really share with you today, but also on, on uh, shed some light on what some of the speakers have already said today, uh, particularly talking about the transformational process that Stanley Krippner talked about, how a lot of this is driven by emotion as, as earnest in lightness with, and then also a, a peek into the self-organization process that occurs perhaps in the, how a dream is driven uh, in the frontal regions of the cortex that are active in, in the dream Dream case, you can, you can almost see how the various centers of the brain work together and get together providing information uh, to self-organize the dream plot. So I, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the, um, the slides here, and uh, then hopefully we'll have some time afterwards to bring everyone up. Okay. In, uh, what I want to talk about, as I said, is a few of Jung's writings, <clears throat> as some of the statements and observations, just really three of them here that hadn't some have been covered, but uh, some have not. Re and the research study suggested a, of support for these things. And then a few, so, uh, some of them were pretty fun, supporting observations from the dream ca some dream case examples. Uh, so th these are the um, three writings uh, from Jung uh, that are theor theorizations that I'm going to be discussing. For, the first is dreams as an expression of the unconscious. Secondly, a symbol as an emotionally charged picture language that emerges from the dream, and thirdly, compensation and the transcendence uh, uh, function. I, I put those together because they, they tend to follow each other or join each other within a dream state 